So, um, are there any lingering questions from homework or anything even? Anything? So, just to remind you guys, uh, I'm gonna pull up the book here real quick. The last time we didn't quite finish uh, chapter three. Say again? I think so. Let's see. Let's make sure. Yeah, we got it through three five. We only have we have two sections to finish in uh, chapter three. So the first piece of this is three six. It's something that we've already talked about, but we didn't talk about the um, graph of this. So right now, the the thing, one of the most important things in in free calculus is to make sure you know the basic shapes of graphs. So right now, if I said, what's the square root look like? Square root of x. Can everybody draw that in the air? Exactly. I love it. Okay, we all look like we're fired from coal. That is the way. Um, sorry. Square root of x. If I did x squared, it's even easier, right? X squared. Yes. Okay, I love it. I love how some of you. It was all good. Continue. Okay. Um, so we need to add several more functions. So one of them is the absolute value. Does anyone happen to know? Like, yeah, I might have said this before. Okay. <laughs> like, was only rich of. Right. So real quick, let's figure out why that's true. Take a table of values real quick. Put some negatives. Put some positives. These are my go-to five points for any function if I don't know what it looks like. So if I put a negative two in, what's the absolute value of negative two? Two. two. Or two. Absolute value of negative one? One. One. Absolute value of zero? Zero. Absolute value of one? One. One. Absolute value of two? Two. Two. Okay, good. I get people that start to tell me the absolute value of one is negative one. What do you think they're thinking? Mm -hmm. An absolute value of negative one is one, correct? So some people suddenly let their brain think, oh, it just changes the sign all the time, but that's not true, right? It just always makes it positive. I love it. So can you tie, take a minute, can you make a nice graph and plot these points? Zero, you've got one, one, negative one, one, two, two, negative two, two, and you can see it's not curved like a parabola because it doesn't go up quicker on the y axis than the x axis. It goes quickly, equally quickly on both axes. That's why it's a straight line. It's not raised to a power different than one, it's a raised to a first power. It should be linear. But this line is coming in, and it's like you are not allowed to go negative. Oh shit. So it is trying to just be a nice normal y equals x straight line, but it's not allowed to go negative, so it's got to go down. Okay, not too bad, right? So take a minute and figure out what this would be. Oh, jeez, the size of bad mark. It's not the square root, Jeff. Make that an absolute value. Yes? Uh, for the absolute value, is it y is always positive, or can the y be negative and the x is even positive? Like, you know how the graph is going up like this? Does it ever flip and go down? It would, and we'll talk about it. It would have to be a reflection. Okay. If I put a negative outside of here, yeah. then it would okay. totally flip over. Okay. Yeah. Because the absolute value is positive. So the only way the graph could be negative is if there was a negative on the absolute value itself. Good, pretty good. 
just like a parabola, you can make it go down if there's any negative, yeah. So does anyone, I don't want to make a table of values. Please, everybody, hopefully you understand. That question, I would not want to see a table of values. I would not want you to make a table of values. We know this. What are the transformations over there? Down two. Say again? Down two. That's the second thing you do? Left one. Left one. I like it. Left one, down three, yes? Now, in this case, you actually could do them either way, but you've got to be careful in general. You want to follow order operations. Therefore, so left one, so I take every single point, left one, down three. That point, left one, down three. Left one, down three. Uh, left one, down three. Scale well for here, okay. So then it's like that. So the whole graph just moves over, left one, down three. So you can do it point by point and just fill it in. How can you check that? What point is this? What point is that one right there? Negative two. Negative two. Right? So what should happen if I put a negative two in? If I put a negative two in, what should it get out? Negative two. So sure enough, negative two plus one is negative one. Absolute value negative one is one. Minus three is negative two. So you can always check your shifted graph. That kicks so much ass. Maybe. Okay. Okay. So all that. So we, we now we know the basic shape of the absolute value, and now we can do transformations to it. Right. So you guys try this one. Negative two, absolute value of x minus one. I've sort of given away the game here a little bit, but I just want to make sure everybody's on the right track. I've listed three things there, so I've given away there's three transformations. Can somebody give me the first thing I should do? Write one. And then the other two things I could actually do either order. There are two more things though. What does that mean? What do I do to all the outputs? Multiply, Multiply them by two, so it gets skinnier. Mm -hmm. right? Every point goes up higher than it was before, so it gets skinnier. And what does this mean? Say again? Reflect it. Reflect it how? Yes, you reflect over the X. My question is, what usually you tell us to like do it in the order of how it's written. Order operations. Order now, what's operation? the order of operations? Okay, First thing okay. I do is in parentheses. Okay. Yeah. And that's just to be safe. Okay. On this one, you can actually do a few things out of order, but just to be safe, just to get in the in the habit. 
because there are problems, especially the ones that have stuff out here, blah, blah, blah. If you do things out of order, it really throws everything off. Okay. Yeah. So two and three are in your interchangeable. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're both multiplying. Okay. So I could reflect and then double, or I could double and then reflect. So here's the original function, right? Um, bam, bam, bam. Point that's there. That point's a little bigger. Bam, bam, bam. And now I just take the points and I do those things to them. So I go right one, bam. Double the output, shoot, bam. And then reflect it, bam. Trying to be there, I know. When I'm right up on it, I can't get it. You guys see what I just did? Right? So again, pick a point. Do those things to it. Right one, double the output. So right now the output's two, now it's four. And then reflect, shebang. Right? Once I collect everything that's happening, I do those things to each point. It's kind of crazy. What's up? You guys okay? Should I just assume the answer that's always no? I don't know what's happening. If you have questions, ask, please, dear God. Sorry, I, I looked up and I wasn't sure. Uh, so when you double the output, it makes the graph skinnier, right? Yes. Okay. Because it's just basically the slope gets bigger. So you see this line right here? It's a slope mm -hmm. of one. Now it's going to have a slope of okay. two, okay. but it's going to be reflected. So again, it, it, I don't know if there's an air of, I don't believe it's that easy, or there's an air of, I don't know what the shit this guy's doing. I, I don't know what it is for us, but is everybody cool with the right one thing? Does everybody see where that came from? Anybody not see where that came from? And everybody cool with the double the outputs? Right, whatever those outputs are, I double them, and then what, whatever those are, I make the output the negative, so basically it just flips over the x-axis. It was, the output was four, now it's negative four. So I just do that with every point, that's it. So to me it should be sort of like it can't be that easy. But if that's not true, if this is difficult for you, that's, that's fine, just let me know. So, so this point, when am I gonna do this point? Right one. Right one. Double the output. Double the output, now the output's one, so now it's two. Reflect. Reflect, bam. This point, right one, double zero, stays, reflected, stays. This point, right one, double the output, reflect. Right one, double the output, reflect. And then you can see the shape is still here, right? Let me make my points big. So it did get skinnier, do you see that? It's skinnier than it was, and it's turned over, and it's shoved over. Maybe, and how do I check if I work? Can you guys tell what point this is here? Three negative four. Three negative four, right? And what do I get when I put a three in? I get negative two times two, absolute value two. What's negative two times the absolute value two? Negative four. Negative four. Pull this. So there's an example of the upside yeah. down dude, yeah. So let me, okay. It is okay if you're not sure about something we just did, that's fine. It's not okay, it's just not asking questions about it. Okay? Either now or some point. Trust me, if you don't understand something, at least eight other people don't understand that also. So you could be their hero, if just for one day. Okay, okay. So, so all we've done, we, we talked about transformations before, and all we've done is introduced a new thing, which I already talked about, it looked like this. So now you can just move it around like we did before. Yes? So nothing's really changed, we just have a new shape to move around. Okay. Um, let me see if anything else freaky happens. I think that's all there is in here. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, okay. Let's do one more, just to, the one that's, I think the one that's the freakiest. 
Um, and then we'll get into inverse functions. problem with this one is I can't see exactly what's happening to the x. I know what's happening to 2x. What is happening to 2x? Taking away 4. Taking away 4. That doesn't tell me what to do in the x. I need to know what's happening to x. I don't know if you guys are with me. It's pretty cool. What's happening to 2x? Taking 4 away from it. I need to know what's happening directly to x. So I do that by factoring the two out. Now, now I want to do this as if, all right, we're just going to do this, and then we're going to see how it can be looked at in a different way. We're going to leave it as it is. There's something I could do, and I'm not going to do it. Can anyone hazard a guess as to what the transformations are? So what does this mean right here? It's going to go right to, yes? And then what's this going to do? No. It's in there with the x, right? So why did this go right to? Because it's when it's in with the x, it does the opposite of what it looks like. So this is going to cut all the inputs by half. Yeah. Oh, because the B words here move that two out. Don't say it. Okay. We're going to do that next. Good point, though. Good catch. Sorry I didn't need to. <laughs> Just don't want everybody to realize that yet. So when there's an absolute value, you always want to get the x by itself? No, whenever anything. Whenever anything. So if I had um, 3x plus 12 squared minus 2, I'd have to factor a 3 out first. Then I could tell what's happening to the x. So this wouldn't be shifting uh, left by 12. It's shifting left by 4, because that's what's happening to the x. Does it make sense? Yeah. So whenever we're doing for any individual function in terms of transformations, the exact same thing would happen for any other function. So moving functions around doesn't care what the original shape is. It would do the exact same thing no matter what. Yes? Just explain the y shift in half. Sure. Um, all right. Let's just focus on that by itself real quick. If I had uh, this. What would I put in to make the output 3? Let's make it 4. What would I put in to make the output 4? 4 or? 4 or negative 3. If I had, is everybody, right? Ooh, right? Yeah, Jeff, it's amazing. Okay. Uh, if I had this, what would I have to put in to make the output 4? Two. 2 more. What happens to the inputs? What did I do to this to get here? This to get here. I cut it in half. Yes? If you understand why this means right 2, even though it says minus 2, if you understand that, then you understand this, that that means cut it in half. So again, why does that mean go right to? Doesn't it say minus two? Doesn't it say minus two? So what the shit's up with this guy? It's got a minus two, why are we going right to? Because all my inputs have to be two bigger than they used to be 
because the first thing I do to them is take two away from it, right? So I used to put a four in, now I gotta put a six in to get the same answer. Every input's gotta be twice, I mean, two, two places bigger, add two to it. So here, let's go here so it's easier to see. Here, all my inputs can be half as big as they used to be to get the same output because the first thing I do to them is double them. So it's a reaction, it's sort of like, oh, something's happening to me so that changes what I can be to get the same output. Does that make any sense or better sense or maybe, no? Oh God, I love you guys so much. Nothing to work with, okay. Um, okay, so again, everything's inside, correct? Everything that's, there's no number out here, there's nothing over here, everything's inside with the X which means everything's gonna be the opposite of what it looks like. Okay, so what the hell is gonna happen? Let's see, so let's draw our base graph. Can you say the inside of X was the opposite of what it looks like? When the stuff is on the inside, with the X. And we kinda, of, you guys know that now. You guys have gotten to the point where you knew that was right too. Nobody questioned that at all. Because it's got to be the opposite of this to overcome that. Yes? So because it's still cutting in like half, when it fills three, would it cut in, cut in thirds? thirds? Uh, Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. So how would you make it like multiply by three? There would actually have to be a one third there. Yeah. Yes. Right? Because if there was a one, I love you guys. If there was a one third here, Every input will now have to be three times bigger than it used to because the first thing I do to the poor little dude is cut it in thirds. So all my inputs would multiply by three because they have to. Poor little guys. Okay. So, base graph. Give yourself some points. The base graph. Oh, dot a line. Why is it a dot a line? Because it ain't the answer. Just giving yourself a base graph so you can move it around, right? So what's the first thing? I, let's take a point. Let's take this point. What's it do? Two. It goes right to. So what's the input right now for that? What's the input right now for that? Um, it's right here. So take this point, move it right to, yes? Mm -hmm. What is the input for this point? Four. Four. So the second thing is cut input in half. So it was right back here. Stay with me now. Okay. Take the next point, what do I do with it? Right two, one, two, what's the input right now? Three. Three. What do I do now? Cut the input in half, what's half of three? One and a half, bam. Does everybody, so this list should be relatively easy to make and then you just do the list to each point and then you connect the dots, right? So let's take this one. I would take this right to, cut the input in half. What's the input right now? No, one, two, what's the input? Oh. Two, two. two, cut it in half, bam. This point, one, two, the input right now is one, cut it in half, one half. This point, one, two, what's the input right now? Right, this point, one, two, what's the input right now? No, that's the output, what's the input? Zero. So cut that in half, it's zero. Sure. Do you see how that was a compression mm -hmm. in the x direction? It, it pushed it in by half, by a factor of two. So when it's in with the x, it's going to do the opposite. So if I see a three in there, it's going to smoosh it even more. It's going to smoosh it by a factor of a third. Now, one thing you could realize 
is that what's the absolute value of 2? 2. two. And what's the absolute value of x minus 2? I don't know. What would this mean? Wouldn't that mean double the outputs? You see how that would make it skinnier? No. So I could have done the same thing with the points, just double the outputs. Would it come out with the same graph? So this is not new. None of this is new. We're just doing it with a different shape. Right? In fact, on the test, I gave you a freaky ass shape and you just had to move stuff around. It doesn't matter what the shape that you just move it around. That's all this means. Okay, maybe. Maybe. So I think that was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, let me, so that's section 3.6. There was really nothing new in section 3.6, to be completely honest. We'd already talked about the V. We'd already talked about the transformations. We just hadn't applied them to the V. That's section 3.6. 3.7 is definitely new to us. And I want to start off crazy nuts, just to see what it feels like, all right? Um, let me just get your in opinion. So this is all about inverse functions. What's the word inverse kind of mean? Opposite. Opposite. I love it. So can anyone just tell me? What's the inverse, if I have y equals x minus 1, what should the inverse of that be? I know what you're doing, but that would be the first step. Well, what, should, what does this function do to anything? What's that function do to any input? Say, no, 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 don't, not the graph. Any number I put in, what's it do? It takes one away. So what should the inverse function be? Yes. So the inverse would be y equals x plus 1. All right, that, that's nice, right? That's beautiful. Is that cool so far? Now, obviously, it's not going to be this easy forever. We're going to have to develop some tools, but I just want to lay the groundwork. It is exactly what you would hope. Whatever the function does, the inverse would have to do the exact Opposite, correct? Okay, I like it. What about uh, y equals 3x? What should the inverse be? Y equals, y equals x over 3. How are we doing so far? That's too beautiful. Now, I, if I give you a function that's got a lot of stuff going on, it gets more complicated. In fact, it gets to a point where I can't undo everything and realize what the, I have to do some work. Okay, maybe. One thing I want to point out, the inverse, let me see if this makes sense. Whatever this function does, the inverse will undo it. Is that cool? That just makes sense, yes? Meaning, for example, let's use this guy. Give me a point that this guy goes through. I love it. It's not a point. Give me a point that that guy goes through. Give me an input and an output. Two six. Okay, yeah. What do I get when I put a six in here? Two. Do you see what happened? Mm -hmm. Give me another number here, another point. Three nine. Three nine. Holy shit. What do I get when I put a nine in here? Right? That's what we should expect. Whatever the output of this guy is, that guy's going to undo the shit that happened to it and bring it back to what it used to be. What did this guy do to three? Tripled it, made it nine. So if I give this guy nine, it's going to untriple it. 
bring it back to three. That's, that's nice. All right, just let that be nice. Yes, that's exactly what you would think would happen. An inverse function should undo what the original function did. That should be its job. We already know of inverse functions, not just multiplication, division, subtraction, addition. Those are very basic. What's the inverse of cube rooting something? Cubing something, right? So why are inverse functions important in general? Could you solve this equation if you did not know the inverse function of cube root? No, because how do you solve that equation? What do you do to both sides? Qubits, all right. So one of the immediate, so inverse functions exist. One of the immediate uh, applications is to solve equations. Since inverse functions undo what the original function was doing, in my, in my speak, they kill each other, right? I'm able to get x by itself then. I couldn't do shit if I didn't have inverse functions. So that's why it's important. Any function we get, we want to know what its inverse function is so we can solve equations that have that in it. Okay, maybe. You guys semi with me? Okay. Now, this is all nice and good. But how do we handle when the function gets worse? Yes? That's a little too worse. Let's, let's go in the middle. Let's go. Let's go one step worse at a time. So what if I had this function here? What do we have? Uh, let's say, um, yeah, x minus 2 to the fifth plus 7. And I want to figure out the inverse function. Is that 5? That's a 5, yes. So there's a process I can use, and the process makes almost too much sense to believe. So remember what happened with the inverse functions when it was 2, 6 for the original function? What was it for the inverse? 6, 2. Do you see how the x's and the y's switch? And that only makes sense, because the inverse should undo what the original did. So I'm just going to, so watch this. This is almost too good to believe. Isn't this y? So the first step is bring y back. And I always do this because I'm about to do something funky. I'm about to do something that's not algebraic. I'm about to apply an idea. What does an inverse function do to every point? It switches the x and y. Yes? That's what an inverse function does, switches the x and y. So what do I do algebraically to find the inverse function? I switch the x and y first. Now that's not good enough. Switch the x and y, and then I solve for y. Now, now let's see why this makes sense. This function adds 7. What should my inverse function do? This function raises to a fifth power. What should my inverse function do? The root. This function subtracts 2. At some point, what should my inverse function do? Add 2. So, let this make all the sense. So we saw earlier how a points, points turn, how points switch, x and y points parts switch from a function to its inverse. And, and that's it just makes sense. So doing this, now watch what happens. If I try to solve for y, am I not going to do all the opposite stuff? How do I start to solve for y? Subtract 7, yes? What would I do next? Fifth, whatever, yeah, fifth root. And then the last thing I'm going to do, add two. Let me put this up here. Because I want to introduce the notation now. It's almost too nice to believe. Does it 
Does it add to instead of subtract to? Yes. Does it fifth root instead of fifth power? Yes. Does it subtract seven instead of plus seven? Yes. I just needed help in determining what order it does those things in. The symbol we use for the inverse is kind of unfortunate. Again, there's a lot of unfortunate choices that were made in the history of math. We use this symbol. It means inverse function. This means inverse function of f. This does not mean 1 over f. So you can see why it was a bad choice of notation. So let's do a couple things with this result. Um, help me out. Figure out what f of uh, 3 is. Be careful, you got to use the right function, right? I want to know f of 3. So what's my f function? What's my f function? x minus 2 to the 5th plus 7, yes? How do I figure out f of 3? I just plug in a 3. We're going to catch up to you, don't worry. So you plug in a 3. Right? So what's 3 minus 2 to the 5th? 1 to the 5th is 1 plus 7 is 8. And that's amazing. So f of 3 is 8. Now we already know what this should be, but just verify it. What is f inverse of 8? What should it be? Three. Yes! The original function went through 3, 8. The inverse should go through 8, 3, but let's verify. So let's plug an 8 in there. What's 8 minus 7? Holy shit, 5th through to 1. 1 plus 2, 3. 3, 8, 8, 3. All right, now get ready for the funky level. Okay. So I've got my function, and I've got my inverse. And we know how to do composite functions. Can we figure out what f inverse of f of x is? Oh, Jeff. How do I do a composite function? Well, what am I putting into f inverse? I'm putting f, which is what? This. Yes? Is that cool? What is f of x? It's this. Okay, I can do that right away. I can replace that with what it is. Now, what do I need to do with this? I need to plug it into where? f inverse. So I've got to plug it in right there. I think. Here we go. Is everybody cool with that? Whatever's in here, I plug it into this function. That's all. That's every all the time. All the time. Every one of the time. So this will be the fifth root of all this shit. Minus seven, and then outside plus two. Well, not at first. What has that first? These cancel. Fifth root of a fifth power cancels. x minus 2 plus 2 and you're off with x. Now why would I expect that to happen? Because what should f inverse and f do to each other? They should kill each other. So I knew the answer was going to be x. I just wanted to put you through that. Yes? Say again. If I, yeah, exactly. If I put a number into f, Get the result and put that into f inverse, I come right back to what the original number was, which is exactly what we just did over here, right? We put 3 into f and got 8. Then we put 8 into f inverse and got back to 3. So again, that goes right along with the idea. The inverse means opposite. So whatever the inverse function is, it should undo what the original function did. What the original function did to 3, it turned it into 8. What should the inverse function do to 8? Bring it back to 3. Okay. I'll lock up. Now, 
kind of did this in a different order than I normally do, and I'm trying to see if I like it. This so far is fun. Um, now let me leave all the crap over here. So one level of this is algebraic, right? What happens algebraically? Another level of this is what happens graphically. And you should be expecting that. Uh, I don't know if I've told you this yet. Have I told you what pre-calculus purpose is? Say again? Good. But it's a very specific purpose pre-calculus has. Say again? Graphing, yes. In fact, I affectionately call it graphing hell. You're going to graph the hell out of everything. You're just going to graph and graph and graph. And we're going to talk about how to get graphs and graph. Lots of graphing. I'm not saying that to freak you out. I'm saying that to get you ready. So anything that the purpose of the problem is to graph something, you better freaking make it detailed. Don't just give me some, no, no, no. Give me a scale. Give me some work. Show me some points. Because the whole purpose of it is to learn how to graph things so that when you get to calculus you can make a quick sketch that looks about the way it's supposed to be so you can do some calculus to it okay so graphing except for the letter g what happens graphically so here's an interesting first question before we get into this does every function have an inverse So another way to say that is, if I know the output of a function, can I work back to what the input had to be? Does that make sense? Because what do inverse functions do? They undo what was done and bring it back to what it was. You guys with me so far? So, for example, if I have this function, what was x if y is not? Nope. It's not the one I'm thinking of. Three. Three, nope. Still not the right answer. It's not the one I'm thinking of. Yes, 3 squared is 9. Correct. Well, that's not the one I'm thinking of. No, no, no. Come on. Don't overthink it. Negative 3. Negative 3. There we go. I love it. You guys are all like, you suck, Jeff. Uh, but my point I'm trying to make is, I really want this to make sense. Inverse function is supposed to take the output and bring it back to what the input was. Yes, is that cool to say now? We've talked about this in several different ways. Inverse function is supposed to take the output and bring it back to what the input was. If I have a function that there's multiple things that the input could have been, it can't have an inverse. I can't do that. Can you tell me exactly what the input was? No, you just showed me you couldn't, right? And not because you're bad people or not that good at math. Nobody could. Because I don't know, it could be 3 and negative 3. How am I supposed to know? What does that mean visually? Well, here's x squared. So to be a function, every x can have only one output, correct? That's the vertical line test. You guys with me? Why does this not have an inverse? Because 3 and negative 3 both have 9 as an output. So therefore, if I say the output was 9, what was the input? You can't answer that question because it, it's two possible things. You don't know for sure, do you? Are you guys with me? Do you, do you see that? If I say the output was 9, do you know exactly what the input was? Okay, what, which is that? We just went through it. If I say the output was 9, do you know exactly what the input was? No. Why not? Because there's two things it could have been. So if you had to bet your life on it, that's a 50-50 shot. You want to bet your life on a coin? I'm not saying we're going to suddenly start killing people. No. Right? But if you had to bet your life, you wouldn't. It's a 50-50. No way. I'm not going to do that. Maybe. Maybe. So what that means is we have a new test for to see if a function has an inverse. And that test is horizontal like this. Because that ma ma matches what we just said. If an output came from two different inputs, I can't work backwards. I can't do my detective stuff. 
There's multiple things it could have been. I have to have more information. So it's the horizontal line test, the whole the vertical line test tells you if something's a function. A horizontal line test then says, does that function have an inverse? Now some of you guys might be saying to yourself, wait a minute, I know the inverse of squaring something. You think you do. You don't know. So what, what, what's sort of the inverse of squaring something? Taking a square root. But whenever I take a square root, what do I have to put? Plus or minus. So it's not a direct function then, is it? If, all right, so let's do this. That's number one, I'm gonna come back to this in a minute. So, so if I gave you a visual, if I said, is this function, is this a function? Is that a function? Is that a function? Mm -hmm. Yes, because it passes the vertical line test. Does that have an inverse? Mm -hmm. Why not? It doesn't pass the horizontal line test. There's an output, there's at least one output that have two inputs, so I can't work backwards for everything. Please let that make sense. And, and it's gonna make even more sense in a minute. And you're all like, we'll see. Okay. So now we got another little test in our toolbox. If I say, is this function, does this function have an inverse? You can apply the horizontal line test. Another name for uh, a function with an inverse? Another name for this is a one-to-one -one function. And I want that to make all the sense in the world. So this is a function because three only goes to nine, for example. Every input only has one output, correct? Three goes to nine. Does nine only go back to three? No, nine goes back to three or negative three, correct? Mm -hmm. So it's not one to one. One to one means if three goes to nine and nine only goes back to three, that is so far one to one. Three goes to nine, nine goes to three, they only go with each other, oh. Right? This is a little freaking love triangle thing going on, oh shit. Uh oh, what's nine doing? Nine's a three and negative three. Better be. Center that. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. So we'll come back to this in a minute. So here's the nice part. Here's finally a really nice, easy problem. If I give you the graph of a function, how do you graph its inverse? So first off, if I want to make a function that is invertible, it, can, it basically can't do this. It can't come back down, right? Once it's going, if it's going up, it's got to always go up. The minute it starts to come back down again, horizontal line test goes to hell, right? So I'm either always going up or I'm always going down. So let's do this, let's see. I'm gonna make up a function. Um. There, um, there, 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 okay. So that is my f of x. Can you make a table of values for me from what I put up there? Give me one point. What's, the, what's this point? Negative three, two. Negative one, zero. Two, negative one. Three, negative three. Three, negative three, yeah, sorry. Everything always gets out of whack when I'm right up on the graph. Three. I mean, it's just collect just points, yes? Now, this is awesome. After everything we've discussed, this will be really, really simple. What does an inverse function do to points of the original function? It just switches the x and y. It's all it does. 
So what does the inverse function table look like? Two negative three? It just turns them, right? Don't change the signs, of course, right? Zero, negative one. Negative one, two, yes. Negative three, three. Are you guys with me? So if you plot those points, that will be the inverse function. Two, negative three. Uh, zero, negative one. Negative one, two. And negative three, three. Crazy size. So here's the inverse function. Funkadelic. That way we like to, to get past our beautiful. Okay. And real quick. Uh, well, okay, let me have you guys do, do one on your own, and this one will be really nice. Um, let me create another one for you real quick. So you guys do the same thing we just did for this function. What you got, Jeff? Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Uh, Try and make it really clear which what's what here. Um, I'll make this. Yeah. So first off, is this invertible? Yes. Okay. Go ahead and try to draw the inverse function. A little clue there. So I would, if you need to, you can make these tables so you can turn the points around. There's plot the new points. almost too nice to believe. And it matches exactly with what made sense to begin with. The inverse should take the output of the original and bring it back to what it was. So it should just switch the points. It should just switch the X and Y, which is awesome. Because that's what we do algebraically, and that's what we do graphically. That kicks so much ass. If I plot these, negative four, negative three, zero, negative two, Two zero four three. Oh shit. Yeah, that was four. Four three. So now the inverse looks like this. Now this one's a little bit easier to answer this question. This one's not quite as easy to tell, but we'll look back at it. Can you guys see symmetry there? Can you see where there is a mirror? Where there must be a mirror? Where can somebody just draw in the air where the mirror should go? Like a parabola has a mirror right down the middle. This one has a mirror going here, right? In fact, it goes exactly on the y equals x line. Why does that make sense? When I switch x and y, the whole graph just flips over the y equals x line. Same thing happened here, it's just not as easy to tell. So that flipped there, that flipped there, and that flipped there, so forth. You guys, a little harder to tell when it's going down like that. Maybe? No? Isn't that kind of cool? It looks a little bit. Sometimes they'll look like the. Anybody ever heard of the Nazca lines? 
down in Peru than Nazca lines? Have you guys never heard of those? Look at them. They're these, these uh, drawings that were made so long ago, we have no idea how they knew what they were drawing, because you can only tell from way up what the shapes are. So anyway, some of these kind of look like Nazca lines from the drawing. So now watch this. If, I mean, that will always happen, right? So if an inverse function just flips over the y equals x line, and I have a parabola, if I flip that over the y equals x line, it would look like this. Is that a function? There you go. So the horizontal line test, basically, if I flip it, I can do a vertical line test and see it's not a function. So what do we do instead? We don't flip it, and we just do a horizontal line test. Some of you guys get what I'm saying? Just do, don't flip the whole thing. Just do a horizontal line test. Instead of flipping it and then do a vertical line test, just do a horizontal line test. Maybe. So it's a whole other way to see why the horizontal line test makes sense. It is my hope. Okay. Right, maybe. So you guys do a couple problems for me. Do a little review here. Find f inverse. So do those two first. I do have a handout for inverse functions. I just didn't print it out. I was so focused on getting the tests finished. So I'll bring that tomorrow. Can you uh, pull up the test? Yeah. Uh, let's see. I might as well do that right now. Who did not get their test back? You. You are. There you are. Do a little quick uh, test of the curve one again. This is your current average, and this is what your average should be if you get all the tests and get your test back. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Wait, is like greater than? Yeah, not including homework, so it's just the oh, test okay. includes okay. average. I don't do the homework until then.
Make sure everybody's on the right track. What's the first step here? Yes, switch X and Y. Where's Y? This is Y, correct? So then I switch X and Y. You don't have to put the dial line. I do just because I'm not actually doing algebra to get from here to here. And I really hope this makes sense. To solve for a letter, I undo all the operations. That's why it makes sense. I'm going to end up with the function that has all the opposite operations in it, the inverse function. So how do I solve for Y? Multiply by 3, add 1. Therefore, f inverse 3x plus 1. The original subtracting 1, this one adds 1. The original divided by 3, this one multiplies by 3. Okay? It's almost too nice to believe if you just let it be. What's really cool is switching the x and y. When do you do that for inverses? For everything. Everything. That's the basic idea of inverse, switch the x and y. Graphically, algebraically, it's crazy. Now this one, I want to save you from yourselves a bit. This is y. Switch the x and y. What's the first thing there? I'm really all about the 7 today. Subtract the 7, because now I can do what? i got to kill what next? Cube root, so I can cube. Now here's what you, please don't, please dear God, there's no reason to cube this, understood? Don't write it three times, there's no reason. Just leave it like that. What if it was an eighth power, holy shit. <laughs> well, the eighth power's not invertible, that's all right. And then x minus seven, cube, what do I do next? Add five. Add five. And then divide by two, is that cool? And that'll be your f and u. Right, add five, bam, and then divide by two, bam. So that is the function that does all the opposite shit in the opposite order. So it is the inverse function. That makes almost too much sense if, if you let it. Okay. Sure. Now, I just put that up there, so I don't think you guys have a chance to do that one, but. Hopefully you can tell what those points are trying to be. It's always weird up at the board. Yes, okay, these are not too bad. Yes. That one's up here. So you don't have to make the table. You just kind of do each point one at a time, right? So let's try to do it that way, just a shortcut. What point is this? Negative four, negative one. So my inverse is going to go through negative 1, negative 4. Mm -hmm. What point is this? Negative 2, 1. Negative 2, 1. So my inverse is going to go through 1, negative 2. Everybody with me so far? Mm -hmm. So you can make the table if you want to. Or you can just take each point. That's uh, three, two. 3, 2. So my inverse is going to go through three, two, three. 2, 3. That is four three. 4, 3. So my inverse is going to go through 3, 4. Three, four. Uh, shaboom. Look at that, isn't that cool? Let that be a little like tiny bit cool, right? And, and you can see the mirror. You don't have to draw the mirror in here, but that's what we call the axis of symmetry. Holy shit, does that sound familiar? Not really, because it's not a single function, but still. It is where the mirror would go. But maybe. Okay. Um, Next level of this, <laughs> I think I'll just do one more thing with you guys. I'll let us out of here early. Um, it's one of my favorite problems, and of course it would be. Uh, let me try to freeze this thing. Oh, shoot. Do this to you? Probably not. I don't want to throw this at you if I don't do it.
Well, okay, there's that, but that's not what I want. All right, no, I don't know what's like here. That's fine, that's fine. So let me give you the, the next level down for what I'm thinking. All right, yeah, that's fine. Um, oh, yeah, rush. All right, Blue, you served me well. If g of phi equals seven, what's g inverse of seven? Basically, exactly what we just were talking about. Um, let me see if I can create the problem I wanted here. Just a little bit. Okay. Um, if g of two plus one equals four. Don't worry about that one. That's, that's kind of like a next level up. I don't know if I want to do that to you. Uh, that's plenty. I think that's plenty. We'll, we'll, we'll leave a little bit early. Um, so everybody's got their test back, right? Test corrections due. You got time. They're due the day of the next test. And we'll talk about the next test. I might have to push it back, considering we had to push back the first test. So we'll talk about that. Um, if you have any questions, come up. Ask me.